So if we look in on the Genesis story and, and what happens there, here's what Satan says. Let's look at his words. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Did God actually say? Did God actually say? That's key. That, this is what Satan does. This is what he always does. This is his chief tool and goal. His tool is to take God's words and to twist them, to question them. And his goal is to turn you and I, to turn people against God. And look what he says next. The serpent said, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. This is it. This is it. This is where fear begins. This is where it enters in. You see, Satan right here, he creates the fear. He instills a fear in the man and the woman that that maybe God didn't tell them the truth. Maybe God is wrong in what he said. Maybe, most of all, maybe God is holding out on the man and the woman. Satan makes them afraid that their life is, is not good or good enough and could actually be better. Instills a fear here. Chief tool, God's word. Chief goal, to turn people against God. Chief tactic is deception. Here's what Jesus says about him in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 8. The devil, he was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. Okay. This is important. This is really important. So listen, um, Underneath every single fear that we ever have is a belief in a lie. Underneath every single fear is a belief in a lie. So if you are afraid of losing your job, the lie that you're believing is that if you do lose it, you won't be okay and that God won't take care of you. If you are afraid of getting some disease or getting in a car accident, the lie you're believing that is if you do, your life surely will be miserable, and that God cannot make any good come of it for you. If you are afraid of not finding a spouse or not being able to have children, then the lie you are believing is that you must have those things to be happy and that God is holding out on you. If you're afraid of deep relationship with others, of really opening up the lie that you're believing is that if you do, um, it it, it won't work, You'll, you'll be rejected and God won't work through it. It won't be good for you. If you're afraid of not making it or not having enough money, the lie you're believing is that God does not know your needs and will not provide for you. You see, underneath every single fear that we ever have is a belief in a lie. Belief in a lie, that's what's underneath it. The devil does not speak truth, he speaks twisted truth, which are lies. And, and the reason this is so important for us to, to see is because this is where evil comes from. Evil enters in at the point of lies which creates fear. Every single evil that has ever taken place comes from this point. Every murder. Every murder that's ever taken place happened because someone was either afraid of what the person they killed would do if they didn't kill them, and they believed a lie that God would not be a just judge of the person for their wrongs one day. War. Every war. Every war that has ever been waged has been due to fear. Fear of what would happen if arms were not taken up. It doesn't mean there's not just wars that should be fought, but the motivation, fear, is still fear. That's the reason that drives it. So let, let, let me offer you this. Um, both secular psychologists and Christian ones like Ed Welch say what we can do is face our fears, that that's what we need to do. So Welch asks the question this way. He says we, ask, we should ask, what will really happen if our fears come true? What will really happen? Funny enough, here's how the uh, secular publication Psychology Today phrases it. (laughs) Exposing ourselves to our personal demons is the best way to move past them. They know they believed in demons. Um, There it is. Exposing yourself is the best way to move past it. So so do that. Ask yourself what, what your fear is. Ask, what am I really afraid of? What is it? And then ask, what lie am I believing here? And, and then what will happen if this fear really does come true? And, and then begin to look for God's promise to you in that situation. And that will help. That will help. 